just voice now no murmuring if you want 5 minutes i can give you nervous system is a specialized system of the basic tissues the property of the nervous system is of conductivity it conducts the impulses from central nervous system to different parts of the body and not only this but it also receive the information from the different parts of the body or from the surroundings so what happens try to understand if i keep my hand here the sensation leads to the cns cns analyze whether the touch part is hot or suitable to the body if instead of the cold if it is the hot the sensation the central nervous system analyze this sensation and give the order that take out your hand so the point is all this type of the conductivity that means receiving the information from the different parts of the body or from the surroundings and that information why don't you sit here i don't want any type of noise try to understand and that information analyze in the central nervous system and give the orders that means all this type of conductivity of the impulses are carried out by nervous system so in short we say that nervous system is consisting of or it has the special property of the conductivity for this special properties of conductivity it is also consisting of the cells and as we have read in previous classes of the tissues all the tissues are having the cells so similar to those the nervous system is also having the cells and the cells present in the nervous system are of two types one is the neuron and another is neuroglial cells the neurons are the structural and functional unit of the nervous system and in human being the neurons are about 10 billion neurons 10 million neurons are present in nervous system the property of this as we have said that nervous system the neurons are the structural and functional unit of the nervous system and their number is about 10 million of neurons are present in the human body if the cell body of the neurons is destroyed there is no regeneration of the neurons so it is very important point if the cell body of the neuron is lost or damaged there is no regeneration of the neurons and its number is 10 million of neurons nearby after this hurry up the neurons they are having the cell body the cell body is similar to the other cell is having the nucleus cytoplasm the cytoplasm is consisting of nasal bodies mitochondria lipoprotein melanin pigments all these they are present in the cell body of the neurons beside the cell body the neurons is having the processes girl to come forward why are you sitting so tightly beside the cell body the neurons is having the processes the processes are of two types 
one is a single process that is called exon and another is short process and this short process they are multiple in numbers these are called dendrites so two type of processes one is the exon another is dendrite that is the one thing the second type of the cell is neuroglial cells the neuroglial cells they are not concerning with the neuronal activities rather they are providing the nutrition and support to the neurons neuroglial cells they are providing the nutrition and support to the neurons they are not concerning with the conductivity after this now i come back to the general anatomy nervous system is dividing into two types central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system is consisting of brain and spinal cord so brain and spinal cord are put under the head of central nervous system so whenever we will talk about the central nervous system that means we are talking about the cns that is brain and spinal cord second type we classify into the peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system and central nervous system hurry up come so we have already discussed this in general anatomy we classify the nervous system into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system look the classification central nervous system is consisting of the dividing this into the brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system it is consisting of peripheral nerves and nerve ganglia okay at present as i told you that the central nervous system the cell body of the neurons what is the neurons as i have told you it is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system and their numbers are 10 billion 10 million of neurons present in the human body and no regeneration of the neurons if the cell body is damaged all right these neurons the cell bodies of the neurons in central nervous system they are present in the gray matter underline this the cell bodies of the neurons are present in the gray matter of central nervous system that means the gray matter of the brain and gray matter of the spinal cord where the cell bodies of the neurons are present besides this the cell bodies of the neurons some cell bodies of the neurons are present outside the central nervous system try to understand the cell bodies of the neurons are present in the gray matter of the brain and spinal cord but besides this the cell bodies of the neurons are present outside the central nervous system these cell bodies of the neurons which are present outside the central nervous system are named as ganglia are named as ganglia so we clear what is the ganglia ganglia is collection of the cell bodies of neurons present outside the central nervous system okay up to this point keep in your mind now see the further classification the peripheral nervous system which is again consisting of peripheral nerves are of different types it can be in the brain 
cranial nerves. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves and spinal nerves, which are 31 pairs of the spinal nerves. Besides this, there are some autonomic nerves or splenic nerves. So all these three are put under the head of peripheral nervous system. Okay. Besides this, as I have told you, peripheral nervous system is consisting of two things. Peripheral nerves, which we have known, cranial nerves, spinal nerves, and autonomic nerves. Besides the peripheral nerves, the peripheral nervous system also consisting of ganglia. Okay. The ganglia may be of two types. It can be the sensory ganglion or the dorsal root ganglion. One. Another is autonomic ganglia. Autonomic ganglia again of two types. It can be the sympathetic or parasympathetic. This is the general classification. We had already decided this into general, but I am sure by looking your performance that you people don't keep anything in your mind. You use and throw. You follow this technique, which is nowadays very common. Use and throw. Same thing you applied in your brain. Read and throw as you go out from the class. So all these are the classification. Okay. So this classification always keep in your mind. And you should be very clear about what is the ganglia, what are the peripheral nerves, what is the neurons, and what is the neuroglial cells. Okay. Now I come to the next. Why don't you understand that you are already very weak of nervous system? To generate this more activities, use this your brain. Now look, the, as I told you that neurons is consisting of cell body and processes. See this diagram. This is the cell body of the neuron. The cell body of the neuron is having the nucleus and the other things, the lysosome, nasal bodies and Golgi bodies, mitochondria, all that. That are the part of cytoplasm. The processes, as I told you that it is having the two type of processes. One is the long process. Look, this long process is always one in number. And this long process which is one in number is called exon. That is called exon. So this is the exon. The exon, the bundle of the exons is forming the nerve fibers. Hello. So, exon, one in number, and it is long in size. Second thing, the second type of processes are multiple in number, or maybe single, no doubt. This is called the dendrites. The exon is carrying the orders from the nucleus to the another cell. While the dendrites, they are receiving the sensation from different parts of the body. Okay. So dendrites purpose is receiving the information. Exon is carrying the order. All right. This exon which is forming the nerve fiber. The nerve fiber can be myelinated or non-myelinated. Nerve fiber can be myelinated and non-myelinated. Look this diagram. You are seeing that these are the part of the myelination. The purpose of the myelination, the myelinated nerve fibers are 
persisting for long time and they are very active as compare this with the electric wire the electric wire coated electric wire they are having the more life and more active similar to those these axons are myelinated or non myelinated the myelination of the nerve fiber is done by the shown cells in the peripheral nerves and oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system now these two oligodendrocytes and shown cells these are the neuroglial cells that i will just tell you one thing which i want to tell look this part this is the axon and this axon is surrounding by the myelin sheet and over the myelin sheet there is present the another connective tissue covering and that connective tissue covering is called nucleus of shown cells nucleus of shown cells are present in this covering and this extra look this extra covering of connective tissue over the myelination of the fiber is called neurolemal sheet neurolemal sheet and this neurolema is present only in the peripheral nervous system it is not present in the central nervous system very important that is latest technique because of the presence of neurolemal sheet in peripheral nervous system if axon is damaged in nerve fibers peripheral nerve fibers it will regenerate try to understand it is not present in central nervous system so if axon is damaged in the central nervous system there is no regeneration that means this neurolemal sheet is providing the regeneration is providing the regeneration and that point is very clear when you go becomes expert in the nervous in the part of nervous system or in this neuromedicines and this part you will face this problem if the nerve is injured in the peripheral part it will regenerate but if it is damaged in the brain or spinal cord there is no regeneration the answer is there is no neurolemal covering of the nerve fibers in the central nervous system it is absent it is present in the peripheral nervous system all right now see the various type of the processes before this i just want to tell you about the neuroglial cells the neuroglial cells which i had told you that is providing the nutrition and support to the neurons they are not concerning with the conductivity of the impulses and these neuroglial cells in central nervous system is of different types like astrocytes oligodendrocytes microglial cells and ependymal cells astrocytes they are present in the gray matter and providing also the white matter but they are more in number in the gray matter providing the nutrition and support to the neurons the fibrous part the oligodendrocytes they are providing the myelination of the nerve fibers in the central nervous system so myelination is done is condaline curlo myelination of the nerve fibers in central nervous system is done by oligodendrocytes because it is commonly asked in peripheral nervous system the myelination is done by shown cells that is also the type of neuroglial cells the microglial cells they are doing the phagocytic activity that means if any foreign particles comes in the brain that is 
described by the microgyl cells. Ependymal cells, they are making the covering of the cavities. There are, we will read in the brain, there is the lateral ventricle, fourth ventricle, third ventricle, and central canal. The cavities, all these cavities are lined by the ependymal cells. So all these are the neuroglial cells in the central nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, the neuroglial cells are of two types. One is the Schoen cells. The function of the Schoen cells is formation of myelination. Second is satellite cells. The satellite cells are cuboidal in size. They are also lining the cavities of the brain. After this, I come to the another point, the exome. We classify the exome on different basis. First is on the basis of number of processes. On the basis of number of processes, that exome is having how many processes? One thing keep in your mind, exome is always one in number. Okay, so first is on the basis of number of processes, unipolar neuron. Unipolar neuron is having the one process and that one process is acting of both dendrites as well as exome. The example of unipolar neuron, yes, tell me. That is very common, always ask in the exam. <laughs> that is only one, the mesenchephalic nucleus, underlying curlo, abhi bhi yaad apno ko. Mesenchephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve, unipolar neuron. Median cephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve, fifth cranial nerve. Then second type, bipolar neuron. Look this one, A, one process. Second, the bipolar neuron. The bipolar neuron is having the one exon and one dendrite. One exon and one dendrite. The example of bipolar neuron is retina of the eye wall, olfactory epithelium of the nasal cavity. Then third, multipolar neuron. Multipolar neuron, see this diagram. One exon and multiple number of the dendrites. The dendrites are shorter in length. Dendrites are shorter in length while exon is longer in length. And multipolar neuron is having the one exon and large number of the dendrites. You can see this one. Okay. Last, pseudo unipolar neuron. This pseudo word will come at time in your medical life. Pseudo means false. It is having the one process, and this one process is dividing into two parts. One is exon, another is dendrite. Okay. Then what is the difference between unipolar and pseudo-unipolar? That is also having the one process. Mind it, in unipolar, the process is not dividing into two. Understand? That single process is doing the both purpose. While in pseudo-unipolar, there is T-shaped division. So one end is acting as an exon and another end is acting as dendrite. The example of pseudo-unipolar neuron is 
dorsal root ganglion dorsal root ganglion of sensory nerves so this is the classification on the basis of processes so neurons are classified like this then neurons also classified on the basis of shape of their cell shape of their cell according to this you will see the pyramidal in shape that is triangular pyramidal in shape when we talk of the cerebrum you will come across the large number of the pyramidal cells so on the basis of shape of the cell we classify the neurons into pyramidal one second purkinje cells purkinje cells are flask shaped cells flask and that will be come across while reading the cerebellum purkinje cells madam purkinje ki spelling bolu kya what is the problem p u r pyramidal cells purkinje cells and third look here mai diagram dikha deta hu aapko ye dekhiye this is the pyramidal cells and this is the purkinje cells flask shape which will be forming the one layer in the cerebellum and third they can be stellate in shape stellate or fusiform in shape so on the basis of shape of the cells the neurons are classified in these cadres okay this is all about the general anatomy now i come to the part of histology in histology you will see the slide of peripheral nerves ganglia cerebellum cerebellum spinal cord all these slides we will show you let's see first the peripheral nerve when we see the slide of peripheral nerve what is the nerve i just told you what is the nerve it is the axon bundle of the axon the bundle of axon is forming the nerve so whenever we cut any nerve you will see the large number of the bundle of nerve fibers what are the nerve fibers these are the axon understand so similar to the muscle muscle is consisting of large number of the muscle fibers bundle of the muscle fibers in the nervous peripheral nerve it is consisting of bundle of the nerve fibers and the bundle of the nerve fibers is called fascicles is called fasc so see this diagram this is the transverse section of the peripheral nerve which is consisting of large number of the fascicles this is the one fascicle this is another like this so bundle of the fascicles is forming the nerve okay so when we see this slide of the peripheral nerve you will find that this bundle of the nerve fibers is surrounding by the one covering that means the complete nerve is surrounding by the connective tissue sheet and that connective tissue sheet is called epineurium is called epineurium in the muscle we name this as epimysis each bundle or each fascicle look any one fascicle each fascicle is surrounding by the another connective tissue covering you can see very clearly is shown in their diagram okay and that connective tissue which is covering the fascicle khado jao 
आपसे कह रहा हूं यस yes. क्या डिस्कस कर रहे हो जब पढ़ना चाहिए जब तो डिस्कस करते हो जब पूछते हैं जब मुंह बंद हो जाता है वाई आर यू डूइंग दिस सच फुलिशनेस If you will continue like this, I will reduce your marks. Why I will take too much time? I can take my class within one hour. Finish that. Whether you understand or not. Why you are giving me time every time? Hurry up. Each physical. is surrounding by the another connective tissue covering that is called perimysium sorry perineurium and this see any one now of the physical each nerve or single nerve is another covering having the covering and that covering is called endoneurium that covering is called endoneurium all right now see the another part this is the one physical this is another physical and between the physical there what is the present connective tissue so connective tissue is separating the physicals of the nerve fiber and this connective tissue is having the blood vessels and now okay so all these pictures is seen in the transverse section of the peripheral now each single nerve fiber you have seen the blue colors dotted dotted structures these are the nucleus so that is seen in the transverse section of the nerve fiber now second slide of the ganglia as we have talked previously or seen in the classification the ganglia are of two types sympathetic ganglia or dorsal root ganglia the dorsal root ganglia is also named as sensory ganglia sympathetic ganglia is also named as motor ganglia one thing now the very important part you can see the very bundles of these rounded rounded structures okay now what are these rounded structures let tell me what are these bundles of the rounded structures this is a diagram of ganglia what are these rounded structures neurons these are the cell bodies of the neurons okay so keep this thing in your mind commonly asked all right you focus that dorsal root ganglia all right next question of the examiner will be what are these these are the axons look so what are these dotted dotted structure these are the axons and as we know that ganglia are the collection of the cell bodies of the neurons okay so all these are the cell bodies of the neurons and these cell body of the neurons they are surrounding by the dotted dotted on c on the peripheral part there is a dotted dotted cuboidal cells platelet nuclei these are the satellite cells these are the satellite cells nucleus and surrounding it there is a platelet nuclei on the periphery so the platelet nuclei on the periphery are the satellite cells these satellite cells are cuboidal in shape so when we see in the microscope you will find the nucleus is present in the center very important underline nucleus are present in the center and surrounding it by cuboidal cells or satellite cells which are present on the periphery one thing another thing 
the collection of the neurons are present in the bundles the neuron cell bodies are present in the bundles i am noting down these points because you have to differentiate whether the ganglia of sensory dorsal root ganglion or sympathetic ganglion so these are the very important points first is the cell body of the neurons are collected in the bundles second thing the nucleus of the neurons they are present in the center on the periphery are present the satellite cells look this diagram again you are seeing here the bundles of the neurons this is the one bundle this is another bundle like this and separating them there is present the connective tissue okay i am not telling you about at present optic nerve that i will tell you while i got look this diagram in sympathetic ganglia or the autonomic ganglia the nucleus are present on the periphery eccentric they are present on the eccentric part and the satellite cells also present here the third point differentiating points the neurons are not collected in the bundles rather they are present scatteredly one neuron another like this and the same thing you can see in this central part the nerve fibers they are also present scattered so the differentiating point between the two ganglia in autonomic ganglia the neuron cell bodies are present scattered not in bundles likho ko ki tarah mat baitha karo in sympathetic ganglia the cell bodies of the neurons are present scattered in dorsal root ganglia they are present in bundles the nucleus of the cell bodies they are present on the periphery in dorsal root ganglia they are present in the center the satellite cells are present in both so that is not differentiating point the nerve fibers are also scattered while in the autonomic ganglia in the dorsal root ganglia they are present in the bundles then we come to the another slide that is of central nervous system spinal cord look this diagram very simple slide when you get such type of slide very lucky if the person is still not identify this slide compare what i should mention so simple slide just focus in the microscope it will give you the name of the slide but the point is look the part here s shape mass in the center that is the gray matter so this red color is the gray matter of the spinal cord and surrounding the gray matter this is the white matter okay and outside this these are the coverings of central nervous system the coverings of central nervous system outermost is the dura mater below the dura mater is the arachnoid mater and third innermost is the pia mater so look this is the pia mater this is the part of arachnoid mater and this is the dura mater so dura mater arachnoid mater and pia mater all these three are the coverings of the central nervous system the same covering in on the brain the spinal cord is also the part of central nervous system so the same covering over the spinal cord then look the part this is the gray matter in the center of the gray matter you are seeing the canal 
that is the central canal and this central canal is lined by the ependymal cells what is the ependymal cell neuroglial cells okay so the coverings of the central canal is by the ependymal cells now look this gray matter the gray matter is dividing into the anterior horn this one posterior horn this one the posterior horn is acting as a sensory part receiving the information posterior horn is acting as a sensory part while the anterior horn is acting as a motor part that means giving the order to the next cells or different part or effector organs okay beside these two you are seeing the another horn this is the lateral horn this is the lateral horn now it is very important here i will not repeat this again in the while teaching you the brain and this underlying vehicle lateral horn is present only in the thoracic region lateral horn is present only in the thoracic region if we take the section of spinal cord from the cervical region there is no lateral horn mind it if we take the transverse section of the spinal cord in the lumbar region or in the sacral region there is no lateral horn so lateral horn in the spinal cord is seen only in the thoracic region so clear this mind if you take the if you get the section of spinal cord which is showing only anterior horn and posterior horn that means it is not of the thoracic region it is of either the cervical region or the lumbar region okay the reason the lateral horn is concerning with the sympathetic activities lateral horn is concerning with the sympathetic activities posterior horn is concerned with the sensory activities that means receiving the information anterior horn is concerning with the motor activities clear otherwise the slide is very simple so once you identify the slide is of transverse section of the spinal cord all these question will ask you what is the anterior horn what is the posterior horn what is the lateral horn okay now i will ask you the next question what is the position in the center part is the gray matter and peripheral part is white matter that means in the spinal cord no doubt the spinal cord and brain both are come under the head of center nervous system but in the spinal cord the gray matter is present in the center white matter is on the periphery just opposite to this in brain the gray matter is present on the peripheral part white matter is present in the central part so when we will see the slide of cerebrum or cerebellum where you will find the gray matter is consisting of different layers six layers in the cerebrum and three layers in the cerebellum and in both the white matter is present in the center then you will get the good marks agar ulta bol diya gaye so everything should be clear in your mind should i repeat okay listen in the white matter see the diagram this is the gray matter which is s shape surrounding it this is whole is the white matter okay in brain either the cerebrum or the cerebellum the gray matter is present on the periphery white matter is present in the center the next slide 
This is the slide of cerebral cortex. The gray matter of cerebral cortex is consisting of six layers. The gray matter of cerebral cortex is consisting of six layers. Outermost covering are the three layers, that is dura matter, pia matter, arachnoid matter, arachnoid matter and pia matter. Besides this, as we go down in the gray matter of the cerebrum, that means when we, in the dissection hall, first of all we remove the cranial cavity. In cranial cavity, when we are exposing the cranial cavity, some parts of the layer, connective tissue layer is very densely attached with the cranial cavity. That is the part of dura matter. Below the dura matter, next covering to the brain is the arachnoid matter. And below that, the pia matter. Okay. When we take this section, what we find? The gray matter is consisting of six layers. In the outermost is the outer molecular layer, molecular layer, which is consisting of stellate type of nerve fibers, and next to that, that comes the part of the granular, outer granular layer, which is external granular layer or outer granular layer, is again consisting of the very fine running nerve fibers consisting of stellate type of the cells or fugiform cells. The third layer is the outer pyramidal layer, look here. The cells are pyramidal in shape, outer pyramidal layer, the cells are pyramidal in shape, no doubt. In outer pyramidal layer, the size of the pyramidal cells are short. Below the outer pyramidal layer, then we come to the inner internal granular layer. In internal granular layer, you will find the dotted dotted nuclei multiple in number. That means, again, there is present the stellate type of the cells or fugiform cells or the these are the different type of the cells which are present stellate neurons and outer band that means when we see the slide you will find here the dotted dotted nuclei multiple in number that I will tell you again at present you understand what are the six layers so molecular layer granular, outer granular layer inner pyram outer pyramidal layer and then comes the internal or inner granular layer again the cells are split and then we come to the inner pyramidal layer in inner pyramidal layer in both i am using the word pyramidal layer outer pyramidal layer no doubt in both the cells are pyramidal in shape in outer pyramidal layer, the cells are smaller in size, while in the inner pyramidal layer, the cells are larger, larger in size. And because of this larger in size, this is also named as ganglionic layer. But whether, better you remember the outer pyramidal layer and inner pyramidal layer. Next to this, there comes the plexiform or polymorphic layer, that means the fibers of all these, they collected in the bundles. The innermost part is not shown, that comes the white matter. That is only the way that the person who is doing the murmuring, the person next to him, Say him that keep silence. When we see the slide of cerebrum, for identification of the slides, keep this point, very important point, outer molecular layers. That means the nerve fibers are seen. You will not be able to identify the shape of the cells. Nerve fibers are seen. Next to that, Outer granular layer. In outer granular layer, you will see the large number of the dotted dotted nuclei, nuclear dots which are stained 
blue color so large number of the nuclear dotted dotted structures you will see okay that is outer nuclear outer granular layer third thing pyramidal cells smaller size pyramidal cells are see outer pyramidal layer then same thing comes inner granular layer and inner pyramidal layer in the inner pyramidal layer you will find why you are laughing you can also stop that i have noticed i once i see the face i remember the face i need not to remember your name neither your roll number so first is when we see the slide of cerebrum you cannot differentiate the six layers rather wasting your time in differentiating the layers see that important points now fibers all right parallel running nerve fibers then large number of the multiple nuclear dotted dotted structure then the pyramidal cells the pyramidal cells are of two sides one may be the short another will be long and innermost is the white matter that is rarely seen in the slide confirm that this is the slide of transverse section of cerebrum okay that is the transverse section of cerebral cortex so by this way you can easily identify that this is the transverse section of cerebrum next to that the another slide is of transverse section of cerebellum very simple this is another diagram of the cerebral cortex where you can see like this this is the outer molecular layer then the outer granular layer and it is shown here outer granular layer then the pyramidal layer smaller in size the medium pyramidal layer the larger pyramidal layer this is the very simple slide transfer section of cerebellum the gray matter in cerebellum is just like leaf like structure kisi bhi tree ko dekh lijiye leaf it is just giving the leaf like pattern dekhi the gray matter in cerebellum is giving the picture of leaf of the tree now see the different layers of any one tree any one leaf dekh lijiye the outer layer of the leaf that is the molecular layer and inner is the granular layer where you can see the dotted dotted nuclei that is the inner granular layer outer molecular layer and between the two you are seeing the single layer of the cells flash shaped cells which are the purkinje cells and innermost of the leaf that is this is the white matter so very simple to identify the slide of cerebellum transverse section of cerebellum the transverse section of cerebellum will show the leaf like structures any one leaf is having the three coverings outer is the molecular layer outer is the molecular layer the molecular layer is showing the nerve fibers and dotted dotted nuclei next to that that comes the single layer of the purkinje cells single layer of the purkinje cells and next to third is the very fine dotted dotted nuclear structures and that is the called the granular layer and innermost is the white matter so such pictures the purkinje cells is very clearly special cells which is seen only in the cerebellum nothing else so whenever ask you purkinje cells reply that it is forming the layer of the cerebellum
All right. When we see the leaf-like pattern, the Purkinje cells, the Purkinje cells, their dendrites are present or passing into the molecular layer. The dendrites are coming to the molecular layer while their exon is passing to the granular layer. And from the granular layer, they reach to the white matter. So keep this thing in your mind. No doubt. You will easily identify the slide of cerebellum. The next question will be, the Purkinje cells, the apex of the Purkinje cells, from there, the dendrites are, the dendrites of the Purkinje cells coming to the molecular layer, while their axons coming to the granular layer, through the granular layer, they reach into the white matter. You can see very well, understand this. These are the Purkinje cells. Look the Purkinje cells. These are the dendrites. So dendrites of the Purkinje cells in the molecular layer. This outer is the molecular layer. And axons arising from the Purkinje cells, they are reaching to the granular layer. And from the granular layer, they reach to the white matter. And by this diagram, you can very well understand the different layers, the molecular layer, the Purkinje cells layer, and the granular layer. And the innermost is the white matter. So all these are the slides which you will see in the astrology in one day. And that will be possible only when you revising all these picture of peripheral nerves, ganglia, spinal cord, cerebrum or cerebellum. That means how many slides? Five. I am just revising you. What is this slide? This is transverse section of peripheral nerve. This is the ganglia. Dorsal root ganglia, sympathetic ganglia, the spinal cord, cerebral, cerebral cortex, cerebellum. 